What's up? Welcome to the Pickleball Studio. Just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding, wrong channel, wrong channel. <laughs> so, guys, what do we want? Fast hands. When do we want it? Yesterday. That's right, Chris. Today, we're gonna go over the three things to help you with your hand speed and your hand battle so that this doesn't happen to you. And those three things, those three things are, <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally blank it out. Those three things are the hop and pop, the choke up, and the get down. So the hop and pop is the technique that I actually stole from watching a lot of table tennis players play. But basically you have your paddle in, I guess your regular backhand position, and then you're bouncing up along the kitchen okay. line, and then you're hopping left and right so that you don't get chicken wings, so that you can always hit the ball with a strong backhand volley or a backhand punch volley. Right, Chris? And I've actually noticed that Ben Johns, and then specifically Colin Johns, kind of does it. And he actually calls it the fade, where he actually slides over to his right-hand side, and then he takes a backhand. Okay, so when you're in a fast exchange or a hand battle, typically people are aiming for your right hip or your right shoulder. If you hop out of the way, and then you do a backhand, you totally negate this side, and you take that option or that target away from your opponent. So first of all, you have your paddle in a continental grip or I guess whichever grip you feel comfortable with, with your backhand. So you should make sure that it's firm and that it's strong. And then what you should really be doing is bouncing up on the balls of your feet while looking for the opportunity to counter punch with a volley. I typically like to close my body. Like if I'm on the even side of the court, I like to close it this way a little bit so that when I'm actually performing the shot, it's less likely for me to hit it out wide. But this doesn't mean that you should be hopping and popping the whole time, just bouncing up and down like a madman, okay? These are the situations that I like to do it in, hitting it or speeding it up to somebody in front of me. I like to follow through with my dinks cross court or down the line where my hand crosses over my body so I'm ready for a backhand. Once I'm ready for the backhand, I'm immediately on the balls of my feet, hopping up and down, expecting a speed up. And then if they try to speed it up or attack me, then I'm ready to hop and then I pop it right back at them. Then it's just hopping and popping around until you get the win. <laughs> Tip number two is called the choke up. The choke up is pretty simple. It's basically when you take your paddle in your hand and you really choke up. All right, moving on. Just kidding. So why do you do this and who does it? Actually, you've already probably seen it. Rob Cassidy, I believe, does it, and so does Callan Dawson. But it makes sense, right? Because when you're up at the net and you're holding at the bottom of the handle, you have more paddle to maneuver around, right? You have more weight at the, the tip and then that causes you to be slow. Now, if you move and choke up your hand up or to closer to the paddle, then you have left paddle face to move around and then the weight distribution changes and so you can be faster. Now, when you choke up, you don't really just wanna like choke up and hold it like this. You actually want some stability. And so to create stability, you put your pointer finger up here and then sometimes I even like to put my thumb on the back of the paddle. This allows me greater stability to hit backhands, do rolls, and then it's easier to switch between different grips so that I can also do forehands as well. Number three, last but not least, is the get down. Everybody talks about it. Everybody tells you, you hear it about all the time is to get low, but that's not the full story. You need to actually get low and have your arms extended out. Here, I have Chris demonstrate. And the reason why getting low is so helpful is that it lets you receive the ball at eye level. And receiving the ball at eye level is a lot easier to do versus at your hip or at your knees or at your feet. And intuitively we know this is because you're dealing with essentially three dimensions. You're dealing with speed, you're dealing with distance, and then you're dealing with height. And your eyes and your brain has to basically do the calculus and then choose the right shot to do, and then you have to be able to perform it. Now, if you get low and then you meet the ball at eye level, you're taking one of those three dimensions out. You're taking away the height. And so it's easier for your brain to process and you'll be able to be faster when you're up at the net. Right, Chris? With your arms out and the paddle in front of you near head level, things look more like an overhead and you also don't really get chicken winged. And if they're aiming for your right shoulder, you can easily just 
move out of the way and swat it down. Your mileage may vary though. One disadvantage of this though is because your face is eye level with the ball, you could get smacked in the face and we wouldn't want that. Right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to remind you that it does matter how you get low. You really want to bend at your knees and then be on the balls of your feet close to your ankles. Because if you're bending down at your hip, like, yeah, you're low and you can see the ball, you can receive the ball, but you really can't move and then you're off balance. You're most likely to fall into the kitchen or if you're reaching for a ball, you're just really unbalanced. It's not a good place to be and then you can't react to everything. Okay, so to recap, the three things are the hop and pop, the choke up, and the get down. <laughs> we win those. <laughs> oh, that was good. Pickleball who? Oh.